Hi everyone, welcome back to another Garden Macro episode. Today I'll be shooting with my Canon R7, the Canon EF 100mm macro lens, but this time I'll be pairing it with the Nisi 49mm 9 diopter close-up lens. I've already done an in-depth review of this close-up lens, so feel free to check that out if you're interested. I used to shoot quite a bit with the Raynox DCR 250 close-up lens, which has only 8 diopters on my old Canon ATD, and I absolutely love that setup, but I'm expecting even better results with this one, so let's get going and see what we can find around. I have found that first subject, a tiny female bronzopper. It keeps running around and tries to hide on the underside of the leaf. Quite timid, but hopefully we'll be able to capture some shots. I'm gonna try and hold this leaf. There she is. There you go. Come on, look this way. It's gonna be much better from this angle. I've got our second potential subject right here. Two tiny flies. They most likely belong to the genus Sepromyza because of those characteristic stripes that you will see on their back. They don't seem to be intimidated by our presence. They seem to be much more focused on each other at the moment. So let's try and grab some shots. These are at the maximum magnification. I'm really close to them. And maybe from this angle, they moved a little bit. And now I'm gonna just zoom out. And from this angle, maybe a little bit lower. That should be good. I have been looking for tiny burly gig mites for quite some time, and this time we got lucky. I just found one on this fish cheese plant. I absolutely love this plant because it provides habitat to so many interesting species. By the way, I also got a super close-up footage last year of a specimen preening. You can even see the hemolymph, which is the equivalent of blood in invertebrates circulating in its tiny body. So you should go and check it out. I will leave a link to that video in the description. Let's try and capture it now. I love this. This angle is going to be really good. I love the low key background. Oh, just stopped. That's good. Oh no, it keeps moving. Stop right there. It's better. The tiny mite just started crawling all over my hand. It's right on my finger now, and now it's on the sleeve of my jumper. I'm going to try and capture it. Oh, it's so fast. Oh my god, and the depth of field is super shallow. It's crazy, it's moving back. I just stumbled upon a dead aphid that got entangled in a tiny cobweb spider's web. Let's try and capture it. I can't believe how beautiful those iridescent wings are. Now that the weather has been a little bit cooler and we also had quite a bit of rain the last few days, I've been able to spot springtails on rotting leaves. I've also got an educational macro video on springtails in general, so feel free to have a look at that. I think you will find it fascinating. I've already spotted a few, so let's try and capture them. Oh, they're so cute. And I think this one is a globular springtail. Turn it around. And there is another one here that's even smaller. I think it belongs to the genus Neonura right there. Wow, so small. This brick wall, if you believe it or not, is one of my favorite go-to spots in our backyard. I usually spot so many jumping spiders here, especially white banded house jumping spiders. I haven't seen any today, but instead I stumbled upon a large spotted ladybird that got caught in a spider's web. Let's try and capture it now. There are still so many rainbow ants marching on the fence. A couple of weeks ago, I saw a massive swarm moving from the other side of the house, from our driveway up onto this fence, and I captured some really close-up footage as well. So feel free to have a look if you'd like. I just spotted one that's carrying something. Most likely it's some sort of a wasp, as I've seen that before. Let's try and capture it. Oh, it's moving really, really fast, so I gotta be spot on with the tracking. That's better. Perfect. 
I've taken several more shots with this setup the other day and I also wanted to share with you those. So let's have a look. This first image is of a rove beetle that was drinking from a tiny water droplet. You can even see the surface tension of the raindrop, which looks amazing. This next subject of ours is a tiny parasitoid wasp that I spotted on a rotting fig leaf once again, and it was creeping and crawling, moving non-stop, so it was rather difficult to capture. It would not have been larger than one, one and a half millimeter, and I'm really happy with this image. Our second last subject is an extremely small aranoid spider. You can actually see that it was smaller than the raindrop beneath it and I could barely see it with the naked eye. Our last series is of another small spider. This tiny cobweb spider was partially hiding behind the silky threads of its retreat while it was consuming its prey. These last few shots were stagged images and I was really happy with the result. Anyway, I should wrap this up now. This is it for today's macro episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're new to my channel and you love macros, don't forget to subscribe. You might also wanna check out these videos next. Thanks for watching and catch you all very soon in the next one.